Hi there, scholars. Mr. Shaw here for our next installment of Remote Art and Virtual Art class at Henry Johnson. Today, we're going to be talking about a really, really important part of your artwork. And it's a piece of art that a lot of times our younger artists tend to forget about. Now, anytime you draw a picture or paint something or even make a sculpture of it, that thing that you're making your picture of is called the subject. If I were drawing a picture of myself, I would be the subject, but that's not my whole picture. In a painting or a drawing or even a sculpture, there's space in between and around the subject of your picture. If you draw a picture of your cat, it's not finished if you just draw your cat. There needs to be something else there. There needs to be some space behind the cat, maybe a place for the cat to be, or maybe just a color filled into all that empty space so that people know you're done. And that part of the picture, that empty space in your picture around and in between your subject is called the negative space. Can everybody say that for me? Ooh, I didn't hear quite everyone. Say that again, say negative space. Oh, I heard more of you. Um, it may have been a little too loud for some of you. I don't want you to scream it. So this time, just whisper, negative space. Go ahead. Oh, thank you for all of you who did do that for me. If you didn't whisper it this time, that's okay. Maybe you'll join in next time. Um, the negative space is the part of your picture. It's the space that's around and in between the subject. Now, right now, I appear to be in the art room. That's the negative space in the video that I'm taking. But in reality, I'm not actually here in the art room. I'm in my house and the negative space of this video is actually green. I'm sitting in front of something called a green screen. And that allows me to replace the negative space around me while I'm taking this video. Now, this is a trick that's used by movies and TV shows all the time. But today, I'm gonna to show you why this space, all of this empty negative space, can sometimes be the most important part of your picture. For instance, if I was painting a picture of myself and I was in my painting, what if the negative space looked like this? That's a place. It looks like I'm outside in the snow. And this is a painting back there in the negative space and it's giving me a setting. That's a place where a story might happen and this setting is kind of cold and icy. It looks like a real place and if I painted a picture of someone in a cold frozen place like this, it changes what my painting is about and it changes that story a little bit. Now, sometimes the negative space of your picture can be a place or a setting that makes sense. Other times, it could be something a little wilder and maybe a little bit more decorative. Now this is a painting by an artist whose name is Gustav Klimt and it's called The Tree of Life. Now even though it's a picture about a tree, notice how all of this space in the picture is filled up with those twisting, twirling branches. There's not really a lot of empty space left over. There is some of that white peeking through, but Gustav Klimt painted that tree in a way, he designed that pattern in a way that those little pieces of white peeking in between the branches are still interesting and they're still nice to look at. He didn't leave the whole thing white. He made sure that those white places were broken up a little bit. So one thing you can do in your negative space is you could fill that space with patterns and they could be shapes, they could be colors, they could be swirly branches of a tree just like this. But sometimes artists choose just to use a color, maybe just one color like my green screen background. This is a self-portrait by an artist whose name is Buford Delaney. And Buford Delaney did something really interesting in this picture. You can see that he painted his face and his hair and his skin, all of the colors that he was naturally. Buford Delaney was a very influential black artist from the early 1920s, 30s, and 40s especially. Um, but he painted his shirt yellow in this picture and then you can see also surrounded himself with almost that exact same yellow. This picture has a lot of yellow in it. So anytime I see an artist choosing just one color for their negative space, it makes me wonder why he did that. When you look at this self-portrait by Buford Delaney, doesn't it make you feel kind of good? 
doesn't he seem like a very friendly guy, like someone you could walk up to on the street and say hello to? Well, he did that on purpose. Yellow is a very friendly and inviting color. So even though he painted all of his negative space just one color, and maybe that would seem boring to us, the color he chose had a very good reason behind it. He wanted us to feel happy and pleasant when we look at this picture. One artist that I really, really enjoy talking about when we learn about negative space is an artist whose name is Kehinde Wiley. Now, Kehinde Wiley has been working for quite a long time, and he's made beautiful, beautiful works of art. But one of his most famous pieces of art, and probably the piece of art that most people know him for, is this one. And you might recognize the man in this picture as being former President Barack Obama, and that's exactly who it is. Kehinde Wiley had the opportunity to paint President Barack Obama's official White House portrait. That means that this painting of the president is still hanging in the White House and will probably be hung up in the White House, the house where the president lives, for the next 100 or 200 or 500 years. That's a really big responsibility and that's a very big honor for an artist like Kehinde Wiley to have gotten to do. But let's take a look at this picture a little closer. Now, we can see President Barack Obama sitting in a chair. He looks very comfortable, he looks very friendly, and it looks exactly like the real President Barack Obama. In fact, here's a photo of the president and the artist Kehinde Wiley uh, shaking hands in front of that painting. Um, you can tell that Mr. Wiley was very, very proud of his work, and he got to meet the president uh, after painting this picture. Um, but if we go back to that painting of the president, what do you notice he did in all of that negative space? Did he just paint it one color? Did he fill it with patterns? Did he make it a real believable place, like a landscape or a setting? Not quite. He did a little bit of everything. That background, that negative space in this picture, is completely filled with leaves and flowers. Now, it does seem like a pattern because the leaf shapes are repeating over and over, and it does seem kind of like a real place, even though the president might not be sitting inside of a bush like this. Um, it does look like real plants. But one of the most interesting things I learned about this painting is those plants aren't just random. They actually have a lot of meaning. Some of those are plants and flowers from the country of Kenya, which is where President Barack Obama's family was from originally. So his ancestors and the country they came from are being represented by some of the flowers in that picture. The other flowers that you can see are actually the state flower of the state of Hawaii, uh, which is an island off the coast of the United States, but it's one of our 50 United States. And that's where Barack Obama grew up. So when the artist chose the negative space, he didn't just make it beautiful by putting plants and flowers. He chose plants and flowers that had meaning to the subject of the painting, to Barack Obama himself. Those are flowers that represent who he is and where he's from. And they also serve the purpose of making all that negative space beautiful and filling in that space. Now, excuse me, Kehinde Wiley uh, has done many, many paintings. He's actually also done uh, sculptures and some stained glass work. Let's take a look at some of his pictures now. Um, I really, really enjoyed this one, this portrait of these two men. Um, it looks like they are out doing some work. They have a bucket and some tools. They're dressed in jeans and t-shirts. But notice how Kehinde removed the background. He didn't show us a place where they are. He filled it with a pattern of swirly lines and flowers. It looks really, really interesting. And it makes this picture look very friendly and bright and inviting. Um, this picture, I really, really enjoy. It's a picture that Kehinde Wiley calls the Blue King. And you can see why he called it this, because the man in the middle is wearing a crown and he's wearing very kingly robes. But even that pattern in the negative space is a very fancy design. It looks very royal and distinguished. And that makes that man sitting in the chair wearing that crown look even more like a king. So that pattern in the background in the negative space had some meaning that helped us understand the picture. And lastly, take a look at this one. Now, maybe you've seen a window like this before in a church or maybe in a fancy building, and this is called stained glass. It's actually a window 
that's made out of different colored pieces of glass all put together. And notice Kehinde Wiley, he made this stained glass window and he did make a portrait of a man standing there. But notice he even made glass to go in the negative space. He made those rectangles, those green rectangles into a pattern behind the man. And he added that it's called an arc that kind of loops over his head. And that entire arc is also decorated with patterns. If he hadn't done those things and it was just a man standing there in a black space, it would seem kind of boring and uninteresting. But putting that man inside of the glass and decorating it like a fancy window at a church or another official type building makes that man seem more important. And that's kind of what Kehinde Wiley was going for. He wanted an ordinary man to look important because every one of us is important. Every one of you is important. So when you're making your art today, when you're creating some negative space, and we're actually going to be doing that with a picture of ourselves, show me how important you are by finishing that negative space, by finishing your artwork. It can be as simple as coloring your favorite color in the negative space. Or maybe there's a pattern that has some importance to you that you'd like to add. Or maybe you'd like to add a setting or a place to show me some place you'd like to be, or maybe some place you are right now. So stay tuned and I'm going to log into Seesaw and I'm going to show you how you can create some negative space art for me using your camera tool and the painting tools. Now if you don't have access to a camera or maybe if you're looking at this at school or away from a computer, I'm also going to show you how you can do the same thing using paper, pencils, and crayons. scholars so now that we've talked a little bit about negative space and what it is and how artists like Kehinde Wiley and well you and I um, can use negative space uh, we're here in Seesaw and we're gonna be looking for the button that says add response once you found it go ahead and click on that in the negative space lesson and then select your name I'm gonna do sample student I don't want to do any work for any of you and today we're actually going to start with the drawing tools uh, we are going to be taking a photograph with a camera uh, we're going to take a self portrait a selfie and then fill in the negative space today um, but we do want to start with the drawing tools because that's going to give us a few more options so when you see this screen make sure you go towards that pencil in the top middle now after you've clicked on that pencil you might notice that you do still have an option to take a photograph all the way over here on the left is a small camera icon and that's what we're going to take our self-portrait photograph with now if for some reason your device doesn't have a working camera or if you're not able to take that photograph that's okay you can use the drawing tools to draw a picture of yourself or another subject if you'd like to draw a cat or a bird or maybe a piece of furniture the important thing about today's lesson is actually that negative space so I'm gonna click on that camera over here and then I'm gonna click on photo I don't want to take a video and I don't want to upload a photograph I want to take a live picture of myself so when I click on that it's gonna activate the camera on my laptop and there I am um, now to take a really nice photograph using the camera that's built in um, if I take it like this while I'm looking down at the screen it doesn't look like you know I'm looking at the camera and the camera is actually way up here at the top of your laptop you don't want to put your finger on it um, but you do want to find that maybe get your mouse ready on that camera click icon so I'm gonna lean back a little bit I'm gonna smile at the camera if I want to I could have my hands in the picture or I could you know, be scratching my head in fact I think I'm going to do um, something where I'm touching my head maybe I'm just touching my head like this because I want to show you a really interesting thing about negative space and something we need to make sure we always do so um, that looks kind of silly maybe I'll just put my hand over my head like this like I'm measuring how tall I am um, and then I'll smile and now that's taken a pretty silly picture of me but I think that's going to work for what we're doing today so my goal today is not really about that photograph it's not about the picture or the subject in my piece of art 
today, what I'm really concerned about is all of this empty space behind me. Now, when you took your picture today, you might have things behind you, maybe the rest of your bedroom or your living room. There might be some furniture. Maybe your dog is walking by in the background. None of that stuff is really, really important here for the negative space. Now, what I want to do is to fill in all of this empty space around me with something. Now, it could be a bunch of leaves and flowers like Kahinde Wiley would have done. It could be just abstract shapes like that swirly tree we saw during the video. Or you could just choose a single color or maybe a pattern of colors that could go behind you. Now, I really like the idea of having different kinds of shapes and different kinds of lines back there. So I'm actually going to use my marker tool. It looks like this. And before I do anything else, I'm going to click on that pen an extra time. I'm going to click on that marker one extra time, and I'm going to give myself a nice large marker tool. And I'm going to choose a color to fill in my negative space first. Now, this is a good strategy to do if you have some things in the background of your photograph that maybe you don't want to be there. Um, so I'm just going to take this purple that I've chosen, and I'm going to very carefully color all around myself. Now, I don't want to cover myself by accident. If I do, if I, you know, maybe accidentally colored over my face, this undo button, this backwards arrow up near the top can undo just the last thing that I did. And that way I don't need to worry about ruining my photograph. I don't have to retake that picture. So I'm going to use this big, actually, I'm going to choose a slightly larger brush here, and I'm going to fill in all of that negative space all the way to the edges of my paper with this first color this purple now it's really important especially if we're working on paper um, like real paper not computer paper um, to fill in all of that negative space a lot of times that's how you can show people who are looking at your artwork that you're done that you're totally finished working and you don't have anything else to add to your picture if i were to stop painting my negative space here, people would look at this and they would know that I didn't quite finish my work. So one of the reasons we fill in the negative space, not just because it looks nice, but also to tell people that our picture is done and it's ready to be looked at. Maybe it's going to be hung in a museum or maybe somebody would like to purchase it or maybe I'd just like to hang it up somewhere so that people can experience it. Now, looking at this picture, I've filled in all of the negative space around me but is the negative space done yet? No, it's not. This little pocket of green where my hand is, um, that space that's created by my hand touching my head is also negative space. So that inside area here is also negative space. So I wanna make sure all of that is filled in as well. Now, technically, if I wanted to stop here, this would be a completed assignment. I've colored in all the negative space. I chose a color that I really like. Uh, purple's one of my favorite colors, and it looks pretty good. It looks okay. Uh, it definitely looks better than that green screen that I had behind me before, um, but I think I can do a little bit more with this, and I think I'd like to do some patterns in my negative space just to make this a little bit more exciting. So I'm going to choose another color, and remember I can choose any color I want over here on my color bar. Um, I'm gonna start out with a pink. And what I think I might do is I might make it look like there are circles coming out from behind me. So I'm gonna draw a little bit of a circle here, kind of peeking out behind me as if that circle was going all the way behind me in a big loop. I'm gonna have another one here like this. And then I'm gonna space it out a little bit. I'll have another kind of larger circle coming around me back here, and then all the way like this. And I'm gonna keep doing that pattern. I'm gonna stretch these circles all the way behind me. And you can see this picture's already starting to look a little bit more exciting with that negative space filled in, with that pattern of pink and purple kind of radiating out around me. Um, I really like the way those circles look like, almost like I'm going back into space. And I can actually help that effect by choosing some other colors, maybe adding some more patterns into it. I think in between these pink lines, I'm going to draw some straight lines, a little pattern of light blue lines 
coming out like this in between my pattern of pink circles. And I really like the way that that looks. I'm going to have some in this little area of circles. And it doesn't really matter what you do in your negative space, because as long as you're filling it in, it's going to help complete your picture. It's going to make your picture look a little bit more interesting. And it's going to tell people that your picture is done and ready to be viewed or displayed or maybe presented somewhere. So I'm going to draw these little lines here. And then uh, I think I'll just do one more pattern. I'll pick, um, I think I'll pick a little bit of orange here. And then in this last little area, I'm just going to do some little spirals. Now remember, your negative space doesn't have to be abstract. If you want to draw a realistic setting, maybe you want to make it look like you're outside in your backyard, or maybe you want it to look like you're in New York City and there's nice tall buildings all around you. You could even put yourself someplace really, really silly, like underwater or on the moon. You could draw a little space helmet around your head and draw yourself in outer space. It doesn't really matter what you choose to put in your negative space as long as it's filled in. And I think I've done a pretty good job filling in my negative space now. This picture is definitely more exciting uh, with those wonderful patterns and colors. And when I'm completely, completely finished, I want to take my mouse and slide it all the way over to that green check, that green plus mark right here. Now, if you're starting to work on your negative space and for some reason, maybe you've forgotten what to do or you're not sure what to do or you need some more ideas, all the way up here at the top where it says view instructions, if you were to click on that button, it'll actually allow you to watch that video again where I explain what negative space is and how you can use it. So if you're confused, feel free to watch the instructions again. But after you've done um, all of your negative space coloring, go up to that green check. Uh, that will send your work to me. And then I'll send you a comment on Seesaw and let you know how you did. Now, I know some people watching this video might not be able to draw on their Seesaw screen. So next, I'm going to show you how you can do this same thing by using a piece of paper and some crayons. All right, scholars. So now that we've seen how to create some negative space in our pictures uh, using the Seesaw tools, I also want to show you how we can do this with just a piece of paper and some crayons. Um, now you can draw anything you'd like during this process. Uh, I'm actually going to draw a self-portrait. I'm going to use a marker first so you can see my drawing a little bit better, um, but then I'm going to be using crayons to color my negative space. Now today for this week's art lesson, coloring the subject of your picture, whether it's a person or a cat or a piece of fruit, is not the important part. What I'm really, really looking for is your negative space. So I am uh, going to start drawing um, a self-portrait. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see, I kind of lightly drew it with a pencil first, um, but I do want to kind of mimic if you were drawing your own picture, you would definitely want to make sure to draw it first um, before starting to color it, especially coloring the negative space, because the subject really is the most important part of your picture. That's what your picture is about. So if this is a self-portrait of me, I want to make sure that I am in the picture because that's what this picture is really, really about. But when it's time to complete my drawing, I want to make sure that I color the entire thing, that my negative space is filled in because the negative space is the part of the picture that lets people know that you're done, that you are ready to display it or present it. And it also helps make your picture look a little bit nicer than if it was unfinished. So here's a quick self-portrait of me. Um, hopefully it looks pretty much like that photograph I took using the seesaw tools. Uh, I'm gonna put some wrinkles in here because I'm an old man. Um, and then I have my shirt and my tie. I like to dress nice for school, even if I'm teaching from home. And now I have a nice self-portrait drawing that I could color. Um, now, I don't want to spend the time coloring myself today. What I want to focus on is the negative space. So I have a pack of crayons here at my house. And if you're following along at school or maybe you don't have a computer to work on at the moment, um, a pack of crayons is a really great coloring tool. I like to 
shuffle mine out a little bit so I can see what I'm doing. Um, now I don't have every single color in the whole wide world here, but I think what I might do, instead of doing an abstract pattern in the negative space, I think I'm gonna draw an actual setting. So I'm going to put myself um, outside. Oops, I'm losing my crayons here. Um, so I'm gonna draw some trees behind me. So the negative space doesn't always just have to be colors. It doesn't always have to be patterns. You could actually put a setting, a place for your story to happen or for your picture to be occurring in. So I'm going to draw a couple of trees behind me. I'm using a brown crayon to draw the trunk. Um, those of you who have had art class with me before where we've learned how to draw trees, remember we don't draw lollipop trees. One of the best ways to draw a tree is to start out with kind of like winter trees, those trees that don't have any leaves yet. You want to draw the branches first, then you can go back into it and you can add the leaves and add some of those other details. Um, I'm going to mix mine up a little bit though, and I'm actually going to grab some red and some orange and some yellow because I've noticed as I'm uh, looking out my window, the leaves in my neighborhood are actually starting to change. It's uh, the fall right now. So when I color in my leaves, I'm going to use a little bit of each of these different colors. So I'm going to do some little red sections of leaves in my trees here and here and here. And I'm going to have them even going up over my head a little bit like this. And then I'm going to add in some of those other colors you might see in the fall, like some orange and some yellow. Now while I'm doing this, um, notice my leaves don't look particularly realistic. They don't look exactly like real leaves. I am kind of creating a pattern with these little squiggly colored marks that I'm creating. And that's okay. Even if you're doing a setting, even if you're doing a place in your negative space, you can actually mix that up a little bit. It doesn't always have to look exactly real. It could be a mix of a pattern and a little bit of real life in there. So I'm going to add some yellow. Uh, I really love it when the trees in the fall start to turn yellow, those bright, bright colors we start to see. Um, now, not all the leaves in my neighborhood are changing, so I'll probably try to sneak some green in there as well. If I can find my green crayon, here we go. Little bits of, it's kind of a yellowish green. Um, but now I have this top section of my paper pretty well filled in. Almost all of that white space has been colored in with those nice fall colors that I've chosen. I'm just gonna, lightly color with a red just to make sure I'm not leaving a lot of white space in between my leaves. One of the most important things to do when coloring negative space is to make sure all that white space is pretty well covered up. Uh, I might do the same with my trees here. I'm just going to very quickly and lightly color in the trunks of my trees. And while I'm doing that, if you look at my picture, um, ooh, squeaky crayon right there, um, would you say that all of my negative space has been colored in? That all of this is complete yet? No, you're right. I also have some negative space in between myself and the trees in these empty spots here. Now, if I were really outside standing in between the trees, I would see a couple of things down there. I might see a line where the ground is and that grass might be growing. Uh, I'm using a blue crayon for this because it turned out that my green was kind of a yellowish green. Um, and that's okay for a grass color. So I'm gonna color in all of that grass down here on the ground. And that helps fill in some of my negative space, but it's not quite all of it. So now maybe I'll take a blue and I'll very lightly, oops, that blue's a little dark. And I'll very lightly color in the sky behind my picture. And now, even though I didn't color my subject, even though I didn't color myself, my face, all of my negative space is being colored in and completed. And today, that's all I'm really looking for. So if you'd like to draw a picture or take a picture and leave that picture uncolored, that's okay if you don't have time to finish the whole thing. What I'm really, really looking for is a completed negative space that covers up as much of that white paper as you can all the way around the subject of your picture. So 
no matter how you complete this work, whether you do it in Seesaw or whether you're doing it on a piece of paper, maybe with some pencils or markers or crayons, negative space is a really, really important part of your artwork and always needs to be taken into consideration. So I can't wait to see what you guys come up with and I look forward to seeing your work on Seesaw. See you next time.